What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Guy Pandemonium. I'm bringing you a quick video here in Port Royal 4. First off, I want to go ahead and say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, and subscribed to my videos. I greatly appreciate you guys. This video, however, goes out to Sham Neo asking for a building optimization guide. Hopefully, this helps you out. I'm going to try and do it quick as it can be very, very detailed. And I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch a two hour long video. So, short and sweet, let's go ahead and get started. Starting off, you'll need to be the administrator of a town. In order to do that, you need to trade with the town a certain amount of times, give them a certain amount of commodities where you become well regarded. You can then buy building permission. You can then have, up, you need 500 workers in the town. Then you'll be granted the right to request being a town administrator, which then costs a viceroy point and a, some money. Um, so you, hopefully you already know that process. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start on to it. And this part I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about is how to determine businesses that you want to build on your island. So starting off looking Granada, it shows you just up under it. You know, I went ahead and cleared the island, so there's nothing there. And it tells me that Granada is capable of wheat, sugar, coal, and cocoa. So those all sound great. So immediately in my head, I'm thinking, what businesses can I build that those four commodities sustain on their own? Well, wheat, I can create breweries. Breweries require wheat. Wheat's already produced, so I can supply my breweries pretty cheaply. Now, on the same note with the breweries, when you look around at the other islands, I can see Port of Spain beside me already has wheat and a brewery, and Martinique already has a brewery. So... Is the brewery a great idea? I'm not too sure yet. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. I have wheat. Well, wheat can be used to create rum if you have wood, which I don't have wood, so distillery in my mind right now is out of the picture. Well, wheat and sugar can create bakeries. Looking around, I see no bakeries that I own. Now, granted, if I rotate over here to Cumana, there is a bakery, but that is a hostile nation, so I'm not too worried about it at the current moment. So, looking at this view, I now know I'm going to produce wheat, sugar, and a bakery. Now, because I have a wheat field, why not do a brewery? Well, we'll get into that later. I'm hopefully, hopefully you guys are kind of going through the same, you know, same thinking process and questioning why I do what I do. So that's three businesses, wheat, sugar, and bakery. I still have room for three more. I can still produce coal mine, which coal is good. Coal is used for a lot. Coal is actually used for this thing called the forge, which requires a foundry as well, which my island does not produce. So right now, forge in my mind is not happening. And then, of course, I have cocoa, or cacao, how you want to pronounce it. Cacao sells relatively well anywhere you go. Looking around, though, I do see that I have the island of Barbados producing cacao, so I'm not super worried about it at the moment. However, I only have three businesses. So, I'm going to go ahead and go into the part two now, essentially, of looking at neighboring islands and creating a demand for you to have successful trade routes. So, going back to this beer for the breweries. Yes, I will automatically have wheat and I will have sugar, so, and I have a bakery, this is only three businesses. So a brewery would be a fourth, which isn't a terrible idea. However, I'm looking at Port of Spain. Port of Spain, if I rotate so the ships don't block the view, already has wheat, beer, cotton, cloth, and tailoring. And they can still produce corn in a foundry. So, Eureka, you've done it. You fig hopefully you're, you're thinking the gears are turning. I need a foundry in Granada if I want to create a forge, since I have coal readily available. So, okay, my new plan now would be in Granada, I will have wheat, sugar, bakery, coal, and forge, which is five of my six businesses, which means that Port of Spain will then have a foundry. So that's then six businesses in Port of Spain. However, I now have a demand for a foundry in Granada for me to create the forges. Well, that trade route won't work when there's only a demand on one island for a certain thing. So what I can do is look at Port of Spain and go, huh, there 
there's no islands other than Georgetown that produce corn. And corn is a commodity that you can produce on a massive scale, and it'll always, 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 always sit about two green bars, two red bars. It always sells and buys for around the same price, and it keeps your town happy because you actually have a pretty good thing of food in stock and keeps the risk of plague down as well. So, I'm looking at Port of Spain, and now I'm thinking, huh, let me go ahead and produce cotton, cloth, tailoring, which is three businesses, corn, and a foundry, which is five. So what am I going to do with wheat and beer? I'll get rid of the wheat and keep beer, which is my sixth business cap. And I will use the wheat in Granada to create now another demand for wheat in the port of Spain. So now between Granada and Port of Spain, they each have a commodity that they both desire to use to produce another commodity, which creates a demand, kind of a supply and demand effect. Now, that's fine. Granada, I now have my wheat, sugar, bakery, coal mine, and my forge, which is only five businesses. I still need a six. Well, Port of Spain, I know my trade route's probably going to go Granada, Port of Spain, Georgetown, Barbados, and Martinique, just because it's a generally pretty quick trade route. Well, looking at Georgetown, I'm looking at what they have. There's nothing I really need to produce any commodities. I don't have anything that matches. But then I look at Barbados, and I see that Barbados produces lumber, or timber, or a sawmill, as they call it. Well, wheat or not wheat, sorry guys, sugar and wood, I can use to create rum. So now, I think I just found my sixth business for Granada. Because now, I'm creating a sense of urgency in Granada, as well, that I now need wood from Barbados. And rum sells really well, and as you can notice, there's no rum being produced in this little area that I'm in, in my trade route. So now, I have at least four items that'll sell. I can buy it very low from my own businesses and sell very high to the towns. So I have my six businesses for Granada. I'm comfortable with them. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. Now I went ahead and deleted all the buildings because the game is absolutely terrible at going and placing buildings. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my bakery, sugar, and wheat, or as they call it, croplands. So one thing you want to look at for building optimization purposes is how much it takes to produce a certain number. So for every two wheat and one sugar, I produce some of uh, the bakery, meaning I need to have roughly, you know, or not roughly, I need to have exactly two times the amount of wheat produced per sh by than sugar. Meaning I gotta have, if I have 10 wheat, I have five sugar. If I have 20 wheat, I have 10 sugar. That's something to consider. Now I know I'm selling this wheat to another town to produce beer, and beer requires three wheat. So looking at this cropland, I'm going to be trading three wheat out of this 12 that I'm producing daily, which means I'm only gonna be producing for my town roughly nine a day. Well, nine a day, eight a day for sugar, that's almost you know a one-to-one -one scale, meaning I now need two croplands for every single sugar cultivation farm I have in order to have a rough two to one ratio for a bakery. Now, on top of that, I must also think I'm going to be producing a distillery here, which requires two sugar as well. So, what my actual numbers I produce daily are, so I'm going to be using or consuming, I guess I should say, roughly three sugar a day to wheat a day out of those two commodities. So now you can sit back and go, wow, I actually need more sugar than wheat than I previously thought. I need three sugars and two wheat produced every day to produce at least one of these commodities. So for a three to two scale, I'm looking, okay, three times eight is 24. Two times 12 is also 24. So now I know that for every three sugar cultivations, I need two wheat fields. So that's how we're gonna go ahead and start off. And hopefully those numbers make sense to you from what I just came from. I need two wheat to produce rum and one wheat to produce a bakery, which is three wheat 
to produce three wheat, or not three wheat, three sugars are being used daily to produce those two commodities. Whereas for wheat, I'm only producing, I'm only consuming two a day. So that is a, on me, a consumption rate of three sugars to every two wheat. Now, where I almost messed up and caught myself was I have to also consume three wheat by basically exporting it away. So now I'm consuming five wheat and three sugars. So looking at a five to three scale, I didn't have to crunch the numbers. I don't have a calculator with me at the moment, but five to three essentially, if I had five of these fields, that's 60 wheat. If I had three of these, that's only 24, 24 sugar, which is, al which is almost a two to one scale, not a five to three scale. Um, so it's kind of balancing it out and it's actually a lot easier to look at and compute once you have your businesses constructed and you open up your town dialogue and you pull up your production because it'll have your numbers with produce and consumed, which I'll show you here shortly. So we're gonna go ahead and start building here. So one thing you wanna make sure is you wanna look at these type of spaces. You're gonna be using these for your residential. You want the largest area open for residential and the smallest primarily for your crops, wheats, whatever it is. Now, because I'm making a bakery and a distillery, they'll both receive bonuses for being close to raw materials and residential areas. So you have to think on that one as well, meaning if I have residential areas in certain places, I can then cut off by two blocks my production such as wheat and sugar with distillery and bakeries and get max production benefits. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and start on up here. Um, yeah, cause I'll probably have towns go there, to there, and there. So I'll go one, two, three, four, there. Sugar cultivation, one, two, three. And I'll just go ahead and do four and four. Four, one, two, a three and four. Now on top of this, I now know that I need to produce coal mines, coal mines and forges. Forges also get bonuses for being near raw materials and the actual residential areas. So I'm trying to keep the two ones that the actual residents will use, which is gonna be your bakery and your rum. They're not gonna be using forges, but it still receives a benefit. So looking at this, I need three. I'm gonna have to import six from over there. So if I'm making eight, that means I can produce basically two of these. So one of these gives me two of those. So if I do three or four of these, I'll end up having like eight of these, which I don't necessarily need because this is what I'm significantly going after for in demand. So I'm gonna come over here and I'll try and actually keep these ones pretty separated. Um, I like keeping my fields and all that stuff kind of separated out. So I'll just go one, two, uh, three, four. So that way I can just go ahead and put a forge down there, there, and there. So I'll do three to those eight. Um, and to be honest with you, I can probably go even more. So I'll actually go ahead and go one there and two there. And what you'll see here shortly is when I create the residential area, what impact that has. So I've got three of my businesses built. I still have to do a bakery and a rum distillery. So what I'll go ahead and do for rum, is I will go rum, rum, bakery, bakery. Now I did eight wheat and eight sugar. So I'm gonna be producing a ton of wheat and a ton of sugar, which means I can have an extreme amount of bakeries. And for distilleries, I can also have a very significant amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here again. I like trying to keep it all kind of organized. So rum distillery, I'm actually going to come over here and actually I'm going to hold off on those guys for right now. I'm going to hold off and I just want to look at something real quick. I'm going to back out. Production, it's not telling me anything yet because they're not technically produced. So we're going to go back to construct over here. And I'm going to go ahead and start building my residential areas so I can start getting residents to fill these fields. Um, so yeah, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here. And what I like to do is a three-step process. Tavern, chapel, hospital. And then immediately the surrounding area gets residential areas all the way around it. Now that whole thing is at 
it's max, it's ready to go. All these guys have at least three stars. So now what I can do is I'll go one, two, three here, there, one, two, three, leaving this gap. So I can then come in tavern, chapel, hospital. And you're essentially going to keep this going. And the reason you can skip a little is because these places will automatically get some bonuses. For instance, hospital, chapel. So if I put a tavern here, this place will also go ahead and get the bonus. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. A tavern here. This place now gets three bonuses. This place is only getting one bonus, sadly, and will probably only get the one bonus in this place as well. But you'll see what I'll do with those vacant spots here relatively shortly. So these place already has three, so I'm going to come over here. Do that. Like I said, this guy doesn't get anything. They only have one, so I'm not super concerned with that. So we're going to go ahead and keep on building. This guy right here only gets two, so I'm going to hold off as well. And as you can see, you have your current and your forecast, meaning I have roughly 6,200 living space and a forecast of 1,200 jobs roughly and a satisfaction of only 84.7%. Um, so we're going to go ahead and keep building. So going from here, I can tell this place gets the hospital. So realistically, I still need some things over here. But just to make it easy where I don't have to think a whole, whole lot, I just go ahead and build my same shape as always come in and I put in my normal items as always and in spots like these it can get to be a little tricky so what I mean by that is these guys need a chapel within two blocks these guys will not get all three sadly so the thing becomes now, how do I want to go about this? Do I want to build three businesses here again? You know, tavern, chapel, hospital, just put three residentials there and then have another residential here. And that's actually what I'm going to do because I'm looking over here to where I can do another three residentials and my three. So That's all done. Now I have all these spots in these residential areas, and I still have a few things over here that I can work with. So, looking at, hold this up, production, I'm gonna have eight of those, four of those, two of those, eight of those. So realistically, I should put in more distilleries and more bakeries because I produce so much if I have eight of these that means I'm producing 96 wheat a day and if I have eight of these I'm producing 64 sugar a day well if I'm only using two sugars a day and four wheat a day I'm creating a massive 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 supply for things that I don't want because I can sell these pastries from the bakery at a much higher price now, the reason I leave these gaps is because these buildings get the bonuses from them as well. So, now one thing that you'll notice is that they can go as far as back here, which is not a bad thing to begin with because you'll find out that gardens and parks also have a good positive effect on things, which is another thing that you will probably want to throw in. Um, so I'll throw one in there. As you can see, you're trying to kind of look for the one that hits the most spots. Um, so I'll throw in those guys. So now I'll go back over here to my bakery. And you know what? Bakery and distillery use a lot of uh, sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of these guys. So here I'm going to go ahead and put a bakery and a distillery. Bakery, distillery. And then over here I will go bakery bakery distillery distillery so now I've got all these extra spaces if I wanted to produce some more forges or some more coal but right now for coal uh, I'm producing technically four times eight which is 32 coal a day with only I believe uh, how many foundries are there forges five forges so 
exactly really right? Five to four? Okay, so yeah, five to four ratio, meaning four times eight is what I said previously at 32 uh, coal a day. Five times six is 24 forges. Oh, wow, I'm terrible. I'm an engineer. Sorry, guys. 30 forges a day using 15 coal a day when I'm producing 32 coal a day. That means I'm actually overproducing coal, which is fine. I can still sell it. However, it's not something that's super, super productive, meaning I'm only going to be using maybe half of my actual coal reserves. And looking around, I don't see forges at any of these other places. However, good old Barbados needs coal for pottery. So I can still produce coal at a massive scale, and it creates another and I repeat, another demand for a commodity in another area. So having that extra coal is not a bad idea. So on top of that, because it takes two coal for four bricks, I'm actually going to go on and come here. I'll do that right there. And then I'll actually... Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm actually going to move this business, or demo that business out that I just bought. I know, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, is that okay so that's that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put that guy there and I'll put those two forges there now here it's a whatever you type of want situation I'll actually go ahead and put a distillery because that's there and another bakery there so now I have this little bit of section left looking at my living space I'm gonna be at 9,000 with 1650 on jobs so nothing too crazy uh, and it tells you what you're going to be producing for your actual productions over there on the top left too. So it's going to tell me what I'm producing daily, which as you can see, coal I'll be producing 40, metalware 44.3, rum pastry. So I won't be producing many pastries. So I'm going to come in here and say, you know what? The people want cake, okay? The people want cake. They want donuts. They want it all. So we're just going to come on in here and slap it on in. Now, look at that. We're getting some pastries in here for the people. The people want pastries, and that's what we give them. We give the people pastries. So I'll go ahead and come on over here before I get too crazy. I already have a park, um, town square. So realistically, I can put another park here or a market here. Um, Whichever one I realistically want to help boost them up a little bit. It really doesn't matter. It says they're, you know, forecasted only 88.9%. It's going to be a lot higher. I can go ahead and tell you that right now. I don't understand that percentage. Um, we got gardens, so we'll go ahead and do a market. And then I'll go ahead and do another, uh, some more pastries. And then right here is just kind of a gimmicky spot. It really doesn't matter. Um, I've got two pastries there. I could go ahead and put, you know, sugar cultivation, and now those pastries get a bump. Now, as you can tell, every single one of my residents has at least three, if not four, things for them with no negatives. And that's the key to this game with keeping them happy, is you don't want any negatives. And negatives are bad. You don't want it. So, we're going to go ahead and let this go. Um, I'm going to zoom out. I'll go to times five just so you can kind of see how it goes. I'll keep my eye out and, you know. Oh, they no longer, no, they're still hostile. Yeah, they're still hostile. So I'm just going to let it go. Um, it's going to take a little while for them to actually get built up because I just created a massive freaking demand for bricks. Uh, obviously, there's a giant demand for bricks, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm missing. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing a lot. So it's gonna take a while for them to build it up. So at this time, I'm gonna let it kind of run here really quickly. Hopefully, it doesn't take super long. And as you can tell, I'm not making a ton of money. I'm actually, you know, bouncing back and forth, and that's primarily because hostile with Spain. A lot of my trade routes are jacked. So actually, I created a fake route just a second ago that has like nothing so I'm good but as you can tell I mean I've got routes that are doing you know quite quite a good bit at 14k per day um, and that was you know before I got into war with Spain so they, they do quite a good bit of money for me um, so yeah 
So essentially what I'm trying to get at is make sure when you're creating your businesses, you're looking around, trying to create demands and trade routes through your businesses into other businesses. And eventually you'll own them all and you'll just profit like crazy because it's technically the town that wants to buy it. Um, and then I went into a warehouse guide. This is kind of a thing with warehouses is when you have businesses like this, you can actually create your trade route. And I believe I talked about it very briefly, but you can also have your warehouses, which I know I talked about as well in the last video. Uh, you can have your warehouses buy your commodities off of your trade routes, meaning I can buy my commodities from the cheap price here to use here and you know sell it you know to the town at an expensive price or other nations at an expensive price. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how that goes. Um, see where Granada's at? What are you, you guys still still mess still messed up missing some things? Yeah, still well, they're not missing a whole bunch, but we're getting there. But shout out again to Sham Neo. Uh, hopefully this guide helped you out a little bit with hopefully what you're asking for the building optimization guide. That's kind of my rule of thumb going about it. And if I go over here to my town of Guadalupe, this is my town right now. Sadly, they're 86%, you know, supply commodity 75, plague zero. I can go in and fine tune it a little bit more. Um, but primarily, they're all doing really well, except for why the heck? Oh, it's because I've got to get trade routes set up and all that stuff for it. But they're all my towns are in great shape, making me money. Everyone's happy. You know, it's a great day. Great day to be a part of a pirate. Um, so, yeah, back to Shamnia. Hopefully this guide helps those of you guys that are still here. If you made it to this far in the video, uh... Type in Discovery in the chat. Let me know you watched it to this point. And if you do, I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully this guide helps for everybody. Um, until the next one, I don't have anything else on Port Royale 4. Kind of at this point, if someone wants to see something, put it in the comments. I'll make a video. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If not, sorry. Feel free to go and hate bash me in the comments. But I do appreciate all of you guys. So... Still missing quite a few supplies and quite a few workers. Trying to let this one go super quick, and it just does not want to uh, doesn't want to work. So I can show you guys, you know, kind of how it works in the end. So I'll kind of go quiet until this is done. I'll just keep zooming in and out here and there, and hopefully we get to the end. The war with Spain has begun. Secure your trade routes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here, guys. There's no need to keep watching and waiting. Um, essentially, your inhabitants are going to feel, as you can already tell, I've been going in and out looking at it. Inhabitants are shooting up. Everything's shooting up. Risk of plague is still at 0%. That's the primary thing. Job seekers, they're coming in. It's just kind of slow to get there. Um, it just takes a little while, but, you know, you're building. You won't generally build it up this quick, that, you know, that fast, unless if you're doing a custom game to where you're, you know, 
have a hundred, you know, already 20, 30 pounds, plenty of money. Um, so it takes a little while. Uh, hopefully this guide helps. Um, one thing I'd recommend doing is once you have a town built up like this, is to immediately go to these others like Port of Spain, Barbados, to start getting to where you can produce the wood and the actual foundry that you need and kind of delete some of the businesses so you can create the most bang for your buck on your trade routes. But as of right now, guys, that's all. I appreciate you guys for everything you do and comment and show love. So, like I said, remember, if you got to the end of the video, type in Discovery in the comments down below. And until the next one, guys, I probably will not release another Port Royale 4 video unless if someone requests something to be explained. So until the next time, guys, see you around.